voltage lesson five first of all a little bit of review again I think I've said to you you're gonna find in a lot of the diagrams the uh, micro coulomb symbol is kind of overlapping but we have it here as well it says we have a two micro a positive two micro coulomb charge we're 75 centimeters east of it it asks what's the electric field there okay electric field from a point charge is k q over r squared that's right from your formula sheet so the electric field is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th q oh 2 microcoulombs 2 times 10 to the negative 6 all over 0.75 squared. Oh, the glory. What do you get? Uh, remember, we said electric fields are usually in the thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands, so <coughs> what do you get? 32,000 units. Units. Less talking, more learning. Units. Now, if you can't remember the units for electric field, look at your formula sheet, seriously. Find the equation for electric field. There's two of them. There's two of them that have the E. Find the smaller, cleaner, tidier one. What is it? Oh, what are the units? Look at the look at what the units have to be. Aaron, what? It's got to, uh, not Newton coulombs because that means times. It's Newtons per, isn't it uh, over coulombs, right? Newtons per coulomb. In other words, the units are there in disguise, but the units are there. The electric field is Newtons per coulomb. You guys see where I said that, where I where I pointed you there? Okay. Oh, direction. How do I figure out the direction of the electric field? I ask, which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? Which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? It's not meant to be a hard question. Look at this charge. Imagine a positive sitting right there. Which way would a positive want to move if it could? North, east, south, or west? I would normally, uh, right, I'm good with, but did they say east in the question as part of the instructions? Then I'll use east-west notate. I, I, you know, if they say right-left, I use right-left. They say east-west, I use east-west. So I'll use east. I wouldn't take marks off. I don't think they would on the provincial, but I'm not sure. I've only marked the physics provincial a couple of times, and I didn't actually mark an electrostatics one. I don't know how they, what their criteria is. B. Skip. C. Skip. We're going to do D. The reason I skipped uh, B and C is it's one coulomb and one millicoulomb. The ones don't change anything, and I'm worried that when you're studying later on, you might think, oh, it's the same answer. No, no, it's just because there happened to be a charge of one. So I want to get a different answer. Here's what it says for part C. I'm sorry, for part D. Charles, what's it asking me to find? Now, put your pens down. I could do this. I could. Don't write that down. I could do this because I put a second charge right there. That's Q2. And I could say, oh, there's my distance. Except, do I know the electric field here already? Yeah, it's 32,000 newtons per coulomb east. So I have another equation on my formula sheet that has force and electric field in it. Both. What? <clears throat> and if you're, hint, if you're wondering, it's also why I asked you to find that equation for the units. It's that same equation. What equation, Aaron? And this is force at that location over charge at that location equals electric field at that location. So if I wanted to find the force, write this down, by the way, put your pants up. If I wanted to find the force, how would I get the F by itself? Cody, as it turns out, we could use Coulomb's law. 
but we can just go like this e q which is 32,000 times uh, oh this is not micro coulombs this is milli coulombs milli was I think 10 to the negative 3 on your formula sheet is that right yep 2 milli coulombs uh, I think I do this in my head. 2 times 32 is 64. Whatever it, is it 64 newtons even? Someone double check me. <coughs> yeah. And it's force, so newtons. Direction. If I put a positive right there, which way is it going to want to move? It, it, and it is a positive they gave me. So uh, which way is it going to want to move? East. Now, if this shortcut makes you uncomfortable, Leslie, what is, oh, I should put a vector there technically, what is the equation for electric field? Well, if you look up for a second, it is kq over r squared. If in my mind I plunk that there, don't I actually have kq q over r squared? I have the force equation in disguise. It is the force equation in disguise. If you plug that in for e, you'll get Coulomb's law, formula number one in your sheet. But if you know the electric field and you know the charge at the same location, then you know the force at the same location. A little shorter. The electric field tells us the newtons of force per Coulomb at that location. For energy, there's a similar concept, an analogous concept that tells us the joules of energy per coulomb at that location. So electric field is how many newtons of force any coulomb at that location experiences. Voltage tells us how many joules of energy any coulomb at that location has. We call it voltage. Well, actually we don't. It's commonly called potential. I prefer the term voltage because, listen closely to the English here, the potential tells you how much potential energy you have per coulomb. Did you hear me say potential twice? Those are two totally different concepts. Potential energy is joules. Potential is volts. They're totally different. They're related, but they're totally different. And I think it's confusing terminology. Unfortunately, it's the standard. They're going to call it potential. I'm going to say voltage. Also because, you know what symbol we use for potential? V for voltage, which makes it easy to remember. So, the units of potential, or voltage, are joules per coulomb. But as it turns out, one joule per coulomb is the definition of one volt. We must be careful not to confuse potential with potential energy. This is where, I'm sorry, keep your formula sheets out, keep looking at them, memorize what goes where, keep stuff straight, because Matt, watch. This is the force between two charged objects. This is the electric field between two charged objects. Do they look fairly alike? Mm -hmm. This is the potential energy between two charged objects. Oh, except they don't use PE. They use Do they look do they look do they look fairly alike? This is going to be the voltage between two charged objects. Do they look, do they look, do they look, do they look fairly alike? Oh, it gets better. This is potential energy. This is potential. Not energy, but potential. How do you keep them straight? Keep up with the homework. I'm erasing this. We're going to do this later on in our notes. And I just realized I kind of went halfway over the page. It won't print properly. But this is where we're going to have to really keep things straight. Here is the definition of voltage. So voltage is defined as how much 
energy per charge. Joules per coulomb. <coughs> Example two says fill in the proof to find the potential or voltage due to a point charge Q. So if we have to move a test charge Q to the field point and then find the ratio of energy per charge, potential energy we said yesterday was K big Q little Q over R not R squared, Mr. Duick, that's force, over R. Where big Q is uh, the planetary fixed charge, and little Q is the moving satellite charge. If I want to find the full voltage, it's this <coughs> divided by Q, because it's energy per coulomb. It's this energy per <coughs> Who's in my math 12s? I would never write it like this, Kelvin. I would right away want, want every, one fraction, everything fractions, and then I would say to myself, self, how do I divide by a fraction? This simplifies to K Q Q over R times 1 over Q. Ooh, <clears throat> what do you notice? The little q's cancel. The little planetary moving charge cancels. Sorry, not the planetary. The little satellite moving charge cancels. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, folks. Can't kick this car. And I'm not going anywhere warm for spring break. Rats. And this is where we get the voltage near a point charge equation. K big planet over R. If you're in orbit around a planetary charge, that's your voltage. That's how much energy per coulomb. That's why batteries are measured in volts, by the way. Batteries are measured in volts. What they're really telling you is how much energy each coulomb of charge has. And using that, you can figure out then how much work this battery can do. If it's a remote control toy, how high it can lift the toy. Or if it's a calculator or an iPod, how long, because there's also a function of time in there, how long it can last before dying. <coughs> and again, the bad news is when you look at your formula sheet, the first equation the second equation, the first one on the third row, the first one on the fourth row, look, at all, look a lot alike. Well, keep them straight. Let's try some. Example three. It says find the potential or voltage 75 centimeters east of a two microcoulomb charge. In fact, Example three is the same as the first example that we did, Aaron, except um, instead of electric field, potential, and then instead of force, potential energy. So let's find the potential. The voltage is going to be KQ over R. I believe that's the correct equation, yes? Which is going to be 9 times 10 to the ninth. 2 times 10 to the negative 6, all over 0.75. If you're lucky, you might have this in your calculator, but with a squared in it, you might be able to just go second function, enter backspace, and delete the squared. What do you get? By the way, most voltages in the thousands. Hundreds of thousands sometimes. 24,000? Volts. Once again, we're going to skip B, we're going to skip C, and we're going to go to D. And once again, I'm going to say to you, put your pencil down. 
Now, D, we magically put a 2 microcoulomb charge there, and it says find the potential energy. Leslie, I could do this. That is, uh, from your formula, that is potential energy. But do I know the voltage right here? You see, we defined voltage as energy per coulomb, per charge. Get the potential energy by itself. The potential energy at that location is going to be the size of the charge at that location times the voltage at that location. It's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 3 times 24,000. Units. It's voltage. Do you know how to measure voltage in? Yeah. yeah. Named after a scientist whose last name was? No, Volta. <laughs> Italian. He built one of the first chemical batteries. He was one of the first ones to say, oh, if I put different types of metals together with some, I think he used uh, some kind of acid cloth. cloth <laughs> I, oh, sorry, what's the answer? A oh, 48. Sorry, and I, you know what, Kim? Units, what did we find? Not voltage, what did we find? Potential. No, we didn't find potential, because potential is the same as voltage. This is why they pick bad names, I know. It's not potential, it's potential what? Energy. Which is measured in? Yeah. No, what's energy measured in? Oh, Joules. Do you, do you see why, like, by the way, Kim, the math we've done so far up to lesson five, I don't even think, we've barely cross multiplied. Yeah. But do you see the potential for confusion? Do your home, oh, preaching to the choir, never mind. Oh, no, I'm not preaching to the choir. Do your homework. <laughs> if we know the change in voltage, why, that sounds like, now, there is a fancy term for change in voltage. What's change in anything? Final, minus, initial. And you know what a math word for minus is? Difference. So the fancy word that they use for change in voltage is they'll sometimes say, find the potential difference. <laughs> then we can find the work required to move a charge between these two points. Huh? says, find the potential at point X. How many charges are there in this picture? Two. So once again, Leslie, I'm going to use the principle of superposition. If they want me to find the voltage right there, I'm going to temporarily ignore that one and just find the voltage from this guy. Then, I'm going to temporarily ignore that one and just find the voltage from this guy. <coughs> oh, can we all, let's go back to this box here. Draw a little arrow and write the word scalar, because voltage is a scalar. And what that means is we're going to put in the signs. We're going to put in the negatives and positives. It didn't matter so far because all we've had were positive charges. But if they give me a negative charge, I'll get a negative voltage. In fact, most often, that's what you have. When you're dealing with a circuit or a battery, it's actually a negative voltage because we can move electrons around way easier than protons. So going back to here, I'll call this charge, oh, I don't know, A and charge B. Charge 1 and charge 2. Charge alpha, charge beta, I don't care. And part A, they want me to find the total voltage, the voltage right there. The total voltage is going to be the voltage of A, which is KQA 
over R A Matt, what's K? Yep, probably the easiest constant you'll ever come up with. Seriously, it's one of the only nice ones out there. <coughs> 9 times 10 to the 9th. Q, two, positive, I won't put the plus sign, but positive, 2.5. I think that's supposed to be microcoulombs again. All over what's R this distance here which is oh point two what's the voltage from charge a at location X Don't all rush for your calculators at once. I think this one, if I recall, is in the hundreds of thousands, I think? 112,500. It's not my final answer, so I won't do sig figs just yet. Units this time, Kim? Yes. Yay. Named after a scientist, his last name was? Yes. No. <laughs> Volta. <coughs> now, I also want to find the voltage from location B. But take a look at location B. Aaron, is location B the same charge as location A? It is. And is the distance the same as distance A? In other words, I'm going to say you're going to be putting the same number there and the same number there. I'm just going to say The total voltage at location X, let's make that a V, Mr. Duick, not a U. The total voltage at location X is 2 times 112,500. Because both these happen to be identical. And Greg, because voltage is a scalar, I don't care about, I don't need to know theta, I don't care about tip, tip, tip. Nah, it's a scalar. Who cares? Uh, 250,000 volts, yes? 225,000 volts, that's what I said. What does B want me to find? What does B want me to find? The potential, in other words, for voltage. Well, that's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th, still 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Oh, but at location Y, I'm going to use this distance here, which is, which is what? What is this distance here? One, three, five. Can someone crunch that, please, my friends? I can't hear, sorry. Six, four, two, eight, five. Anybody else? Six, four, two, eight, six. Uh, units, volts. And that's the voltage from A. Aaron, does charge B have the same charge as charge A? Is the distance the same? Then you know what? The voltage from B is going to be identical to the voltage from A. So I'm just going to write voltage B equals same answer. The voltage at Y then is going to be 2 times 6, 4, Two eight six. <coughs> <coughs> Wait.
What do you get? Did you get that? 128,500? 600, sorry. I get 1.29 times 10 to the fifth joules. <coughs> Volts. Did I say joules? I wrote volts. Boy, what kind of drugs are you on, Mr. Dewey? Oh, some good cold ones. <clears throat> C. Justin, what does C want me to find? Uh, it doesn't say voltage. There's a, there's a potential difference, change in voltage. They want me to find that. Justin, my friend, what's change in anything? What's my final, reading the question, what's my final location, X or Y? Read the question carefully. Oh, we're ending up, starting at Y, ending up at X? So it's going to be, right, starting at Y. Doesn't it say that? So there's my initial and my final. Final minus initial. It's going to be 225,000 mixed up 1, 2, let's see, 225,000 minus 128, 600. <clears throat> Boy, I'm battling here. Wake up, Mr. Duff. It's not helping my throat at all, so whatever I think isn't working well. Uh, 225,000 minus, right? Ninety-six thousand four hundred twenty-eight units. This is still voltage. D. Here is the whole point. If I gave you this, I'd probably just give you D and say, go to town. Hannah, once you finish yawning, can you read D to me, please? All right. Put your pencils down. Normally, up until now, we would be going, don't write this down. Hey, work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic and uh, starting at rest, ending at rest, and you could go change in potential, and you could go change in kinetic. we got a better way. In moving from here to here, it's we've just calculated, we traveled through 96,400 volts. And do you remember how we defined volts? We defined volts, write this down in just a second, not yet, as energy per coulomb. <coughs> oh, per charge. I think that means the change in voltage is going to be the change in energy per coulomb. And work is going to be the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Can you see a shorter way to write change in potential energy? That's change in potential. Can you see a shorter way to write change in potential energy? In other words, can you get this by itself? No, no, this is a completely separate equation. Take this equation here, get change in potential energy by itself. See, this is going to give us a new equation for work. As it turns out, work is also going to be
QV, uh, Q change in voltage. You want to know how much energy you have to supply to move from Y to X? All you need to know is how many volts you're traveling through and multiply it by how big the charge is. That's how much energy you need. In our case, how big a charge are we moving? What does part D say? Milli or micro? Milli? How many volts are we moving through? Nine, six, four, two, eight. How much work? Hundred and twenty one joules. This method used in D is a much quicker method given the fact that we have two points that are not at right angles. In, in fact, here's the beautiful thing about this. Leslie, both energy and work are scalars. And that means that if I had chosen to go like this to get to X, the answer would still be the same. It doesn't care about what happens in between. It just cares about before and after. Or even if I had decided to go like this, The matter. Whatever I lost, I'd gain back, and eventually I'd end up with the same total. So, next page. If the charges begin and end at rest, Carly, the work will just be the change in potential energy, which is the charge times the change in voltage. Work is going to be that. Sorry, I won't introduce the wings yet. That comes later. <clears throat> later on, we're going to have an equation with two Vs in it, one capital and one lowercase. And because my capital Vs look an awful lot like my lowercase Vs, because I don't have lined paper, I add little wings to my capital B to make it work better. So it says, prove that if the charge Q begins and ends at rest, then this equation is true. Well, we said this. Work is equal to change in potential plus change in kinetic. Except, Sophie, if you start and end at rest, that's zero. <coughs> What's change in anything? I'm not going to use that. Instead, what I'm going to say is, and I also know this, the change in voltage is equal to the change in energy per coulomb. That's on your formula sheet, I believe, is it not? I think second row or third row? Second row? Which means if I get this by itself, Aaron, how would I get the PE by itself? Multiply by Q. Work equals. Yeah. Oh, and if you're not beginning and ending at rest, you would just drop the change in kinetic down and you can go final minus initial. Let's summarize. We can find voltage by using the definition. Voltage is energy per coulomb. Or we can use the point charge equation. Voltage is KQ over R. And we can find energy in two ways. We can find potential energy by going 
okay q1 q2 over r if we know both charges and how far they are apart we can also find energy by saying the energy at any location is going to be the charge at that location times the voltage at that location little note little reminder potential energy and potential are not vectors and they have no oh, let's try that again potential energy and potential are not vectors so they have no direction that means that we're going to include the signs positives and negatives <coughs> but the other nice thing is that, that means if we have several charges contributing potential energy or voltage we just add them all up. We don't care if they're not a nice street line. We don't add them vectorially. We don't worry about going winter minus. Ah, add them up. Homework. What did I assign this morning? Well, I gave out. One, two. Uh, I missed one. No. One, two, four, five, seven, nine. One, two, four, five, seven, nine. One, two, four. Five seven, or was Sophie saying no? No nine. I mean yes, number nine. 